All right, hello world. Oh, is that a little hot in the mic? Uh, hello, hello, hello. No, it looks all right. So, how's everybody this fine, fine day? I didn't get water. I got water. Okay, I'm good. So, last few... That's definitely hot. Hang on. Uh, I see what's going on. There we go. That's better. Blow my eardrums out. Blowing my own eardrums out. Um, so in the last stream or two, uh, I've been working on building out a Django tutorial. Uh, and the reason for that is I was trying to go through the official Django, Django tutorial and just wasn't having much luck. It just wasn't sticking for me. Um, even though, and I, and I, bit, I went through it years ago, same thing. It just, it didn't work for me. So I figured I'd kind of put my own together. Uh, one of the ideas there being that you learn a lot while trying to teach somebody. And I'm not teaching people directly, but I'm trying to make a tutorial. And so I'm trying to put myself on the other side of it as if I'm learning it. Uh, so that's where we are. And I got I made some pretty good progress over the past stream or two. Um, and I'm moving, so I've got my stream notes, which I'm still editing down, but I'll, uh, I'm moving the tutorial itself to its own page. Um, which is just sitting there in the prep. I'll post it once we actually get it live live, or once we get it finished. Um, but so I'm gonna play around with that for a little bit, uh, and then we'll see where we go after that. I don't know how much time I'm gonna spend on this. I don't know how much farther I want to go on it. Um, we'll see. Uh, I've got it basically set up so that, get rid of that, this. Uh, we're in Django. We're in, oh, so, is it zone? Okay, got a top level virtual environment. Okay, that's fine. Uh, ooh, look at this. S, search virtual activate, SVA. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> I've aliased that to, um, to this little function so that I don't have to type source virtual environment bin activate. I need to turn on the fan. Be right back. I think I just exploded the music too. What's happened over there? Everything cool? There we go. I've got turn on the fan on my checklist, but it's like, eh, I don't really need to do that right now, but I should have done it. Like you get going a little bit, you get a little heated. And maybe turn the monitor back on, probably fired it up. OBS firing up, I don't know. <clears throat> so we're in Django, we're in our virtual environment. So the, we're, the site that I'm building is example. Uh, and so the other command that I should make a shortcut for, whoops, that's the wrong thing, is Django tutorial, here we go. So we've done all this stuff. But here is how we run the server. Hopefully it fires up. Good, it fired up. The one thing back here, this app is sliding off the screen just a little bit. Oh, well, that's the app we need. App being the browser. Wrong. 8,000 is... Hello, world. <clears throat> yeah, so what we set up was... Uh, let's actually do this. Let's bring that over here. I don't understand why that didn't open. Oh, there we go. Uh, and let's bring our server back up. We can leave this running this time. So the things that we set up were just a pages and a home page. And I looked around, there's a few different ways that you can do it. This one is working, and some people kind of pointed this out as the, as a way to do it. Uh, there's some alternate ways that you can do it with like this template views. Um, uh, let's see. Writing first gen. Oh no. Oh well, actually, let's see what that is.
Oh, no. Uh, Django set. G A N G O set home page. It's actually probably my links from. I think this is it. one maybe not oh here we go learn to is this it yeah <clears throat> so this is this one we'll keep in the notes this time I think it's actually in the notes from last one um, but it does this include URLs, which again, I'm just gonna, this is me just also kind of making sure I understand where things are. So this is what we ended up doing. This is the same thing. The difference is when it set up pages URL, which is here, it did this approach, which I don't totally get. Like from views, import homepage view, homepage view as view name home. So, but like this, this one worked. This is the homepage. And then I made an about page too. So as just kind of a, to push forward on it a little bit. So I totally don't get this. And then there's the view imports template view and points to a template called homepage. So again, this, I don't totally get this. At some point I'll, I'll actually look at this um, as well, but I've got the thing working, uh, and at some point we'll bang into this, I'm sure. Uh, but so we've got, so I've I've got the pages that I've got running are. Let's bring one of these back over here, just so we can find it. Probably close, there's my checklist where I uh, somewhere in here it says fan. I don't know where. Somewhere it says turn on fan, and I didn't do it. Turn on fan. I checked it off, but I didn't do it. Uh, stream has been closed. Let's just get rid of some of these actually while we're at it. Uh, that's the, yeah, we'll actually leave this one open because I can see it a little better if I'm doing that. There's that. Definitely didn't need that at the end. Uh, so we've got an about page. And then we also started making a checklist. And the checklist is controlled by this admin. Let me get back into that. Sometimes it's hard to type my password manager password. Uh, where did we put? So we've got checklists showing up or checklist items showing up and we've set it up to, so we can add checklist items. Uh, look at template view. Or home page. And then we look here. There we go. And so I've just got the most basic version of this stuff going. Uh, now what I think I want to do is add in a bool. So this I'm actually working on a checkbox thing. Like this is this is a thing that I want to have. That <coughs> excuse me, that checklist. Uh, not the checklist you just saw, but Twitch ideas, this one. Um, so this is just stuff that I'm thinking about doing and there's two different categories of it. Uh, actually three categories of it, right? On deck, stuff that I'm kind of actively looking at. For review, which is stuff that's much farther down the road, potentially. Uh, oh, coding with Chris. So there's a fourth thing here and then done. 
Um, and so I want to like, one of the things I want to do is have this checklist where I go through and check things off. Um, but you know what I want to do more than this is, so I've got, I've got the basics working. So now actually what I want to do is figure out how to do testing. Um, so I'm going to go back to the official tutorial and look and see where it talks about testing and see. So I've got, their stuff was more complicated that they do, but I just, I wanted to get uh, the basics of create your homepage. Cause I think that's the first thing you should actually do on a site. You shouldn't make other pages, but then create a page that hits the database and that you can put stuff in from the admin and then actually see it like making another page to uh, have end users interact with the checklist outside of the admin page would be another thing to do, but I think we should add tests in there first. So the way that I'm thinking about this is you see, you kind of go through a first run of just like, okay, here's, here's a thing. I got it working as a static page and here's a page that I got working with a database connection and that I just drive through admin. So it's, it's the minimum viable product to get stuff out. And now I want to jump and do testing so that as we start going through and making whatever we're going to end up making, uh, the, which I think that checklist thing is probably going to be like, I'm going to make it cause I, that's the thing that I want, but I think it's also pretty decent for a tutorial. Um, We'll, we'll do that, but I want tests in place to do that. So we will now learn how to do tests in Django. So let's see, write minimal form. See, this is making form processing and cutting down our code. Whole detail. Yes, I mean, like we they just threw all this stuff at you to start with, and it's just like, eee. Um And I'll I'll go back and actually add some stuff. Like, okay, error message makes sense. Um, pathing, sure. And I'll do I, I'll do all this stuff. I just I think we're at a point where we want to throw tests in first, just to have that be the thing. Um, and also, it sh I hope helps you figure stuff out. I don't know how Django tests work, but I find coding Python I, the tests can help me move through the stuff because um, it gives me error messages with which to go attack. Views. We'll not create some automated tests for it. Here we go. Test the routines that check the operation of code. It's no different from the kind of testing you did earlier in chapter two using the shell. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they had all that shell stuff. It's different. An automated test is test things done by the system, yeah. <clears throat> yes, test will save you time. Test don't mess uh. Some programs follow this one. They actually write the test before the code. This might seem counterintuitive. We're introducing TDD. And seven thousand like either fix it right. Okay, right in your first test. Okay, fortunately, there's a little bug in the polls app. The questions was public recently method turns true. The question was published within the last day, which is correct, but also the question date feels in the future, which it certainly isn't. Confirm the buns shell to check the method. Uh, yeah, so this is I'm gonna have to dig through this a little bit. Actually, let's see. I stumbled on this the other day. Uh, Django reduction, setting a Django. 
local library website, creating a skeleton website, using models, admin, creating our homepage, Care for this series sessions. These are off. Yeah, see, this is probably a much better thing. I wish I'd put testing earlier. Look part has display of list books, authors, details. Yeah. I wouldn't be at all surprised. There's tutorials out there that are better than the official Jang one that would work for the way that my brain works. Um, but I kind of like, I'm okay with the idea of actually doing this process. Cause it's effectively what I would end up doing is I would make my own notes doing the same thing for like, here's how to do it, doing it a little bit more as an exp explanation thing. Like I, I already have those notes. Uh, a bunch of course notes, whatever, two scoops of Django. I should look at again. Uh, I don't know, somewhere in there, there's stuff about it. Django notes, can't remember what the other one was. Here's all the Django notes from 2017 and 16 or whatever, when I was messing with stuff. Um, but let's just see if we can figure this out. Django also provides an API and tools for using different models. For example, you can integrate with popular Selenium, okay, which is why I spent a bunch of time on the past week or two. Try to test drive from any of the Django or unit test, test-based classes, use simple test case, transaction test case, live server test case, and write separate methods to check sp specific functionality works as expected. Test use assert, yeah. The best class from this test is Django test test case. This creates a clean database before it's tested run. Oh, okay. And runs every test function in its own transaction. Okay, I like that separation. Also owns a test client. You can simulate user action. That's cool. Yeah, that sounds good. OHG tests. Or you should check the text label first name where it's allocated. Similarly, you should check the custom method as the URL behaves required. In the case of that, you can trust that Django Zerf method has been implemented properly, so we're testing as the associated view has actually been defined. All right, catalog, test, and a, okay. Let's look firstly at the where and how. Django uses unit test models, built-in test directory. Which will discover tests under the current working directory in any file name with tests star pi, provided the name follows properly. You can use any test directory, you can use any structure you like. We recommend that you create Model free test code. Module, sorry. All right, so we're gonna try, I'm just gonna try and make this happen in our checklists. This may get a little wonky. I'm not confident in what I'm doing right now. actually in this uh, open <clears throat> uh, let's 
fine. Django, 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 Django. What am I looking for? Shouldn't it be right here? H O O D H I J. There it is. Y'all are staring right at it, going, it's right there. Uh, I just want to be able to flip back and forth between these. Uh, that can go away right now. Here we go. So. So I'm just gonna make notes about what we do and then we'll see if it actually works uh, and then edit as we go. So make their example checklist tests make the file example checklist tests Test models dot pi with that. Often you want a test case for each model view form that you want to test with the individual models for specific pieces of functionality. In my cases, I should have a separate class for testing, especially use case. Okay. Yeah. The structure is up to you, but be consistent. Test class below to the bottom of the file. Class demonstrates how to construct a test case class by deriving from test case. It's a lot going on here. So test data is called once the beginning of each test. Setup is called for every, okay. Yes, uh, this again is like, it's throwing a whole bunch of crap at you. So we can just do Python manage test, okay. Test or test? Test. Didn't find any. What did I name the file? Thought that would catch it. We'll discover all files name with the pattern test on the current directory and run all tests to find. We have a number of files, but only catalog tests, right? Test models, that's it. By default, the test will individually report on test failures.
manage isn't there. I can't find it. Oh, there's a test.py there. Django test cases, test model. Yeah, I wonder if that's thrown it. Seems like it should hit it. What happens if we put that in there? That it found. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. All right. We'll figure that out later. We're just gonna again get get working. It's one text. One text two. Okay. So. Update. Test up high. Oops. See, this is another one where I'm just like, it's just so much code. It does like. I really, I want one method. In fact, we're gonna do that. Maybe. Uh, Cause it's got set up test data, run once, set up a non-modified, to set up non-modified data for all our classes. See, we don't need that really for what we're doing. I don't think for the test we're trying to run. I'll leave it there for now. I don't want any examples at this point of everything. I want my path. Because the, the way that I think about this stuff is you just kind of run through it once and like all you're doing is just kind of like, ah, oh, looking around, looking around. And then you go back through it a second time or with a second iteration and you're like, okay, now we're going to talk more about all these things. Um, and then realistically, you can do it a third time. That third time you'd be like, oh, I gotcha. So that's how I'm doing this. Um, if you get errors, blah, blah, blah. This may be because... Testing does not run like static by default, and your app is using storage class that requires it. Manifest strict for more info. E, okay. Run test in the root of liberal operation, something like below. Yes. We can see exactly the function failed and why this failed. False, not true. Section in bold, normally the things output. So again, don't I don't worry about this right now. And this is all for future stuff. Uh oh, mouse is gonna die. Crap. Where where 
is that? I'll be right back. Or I'm gonna be banging around. Oops. I, think I just did the music again. I don't know what I did. Can I stop dropping headphones on that? Uh, need the wires. Need the wires, finding the wires. The wires are good. I actually bought a longer wire today specifically for this purpose. So I can leave it plugged in. Let's see if this is the right wire to start with. It's alright. Now I just gotta get to it. Wonderful content. Ah, all right, let's see if it lights up. Hooray, it lights up. Now the wire's gonna fight me. All right. So these are off, I can untangle them. Okay. 7.30, that's when I was going to start originally. I like it. Already made some progress. Yeah, that wire is definitely sucks. Let's see if that stays there makes it better. Yeah, maybe. It's going to fight me. Which says anything that's part of our design was defined by code that we have written, but not libraries code. It was already tested by Django or Python. Yeah. If we don't test the values, then we don't know the field labels. Certainly, we should trust that Django will create a field with a specific length. I don't know if I'd agree with that part of it. Like if you tell it to do length 100, I'm gonna not worry about testing that. Okay, replace any existing code with the following test for model author. All right, so now we gotta try and play with this. Oops, wrong file. So I'm not I'm not gonna mess with this one. I'm gonna come down here and do uh whatever. gonna kind of go through this line by line and see if we can make it work so from catalog models import author which for us is going to be checklist models import checklist item Exploded. Okay. So, author model test case set.
So checklist item test, test case, class method set up, test data. I don't know what CLS means. So I want to get, I want to do this kind of the same thing that they did here in a second. Why didn't that work? I just don't want to go here. Just want to make sure we've got a tone test in this place. One test. Okay, cool. I just want I want to stay as green as possible. And let me fire up. I wonder if you can keep these things running at the same time, right? A little more something going right now. No, oh, whoops. SAV? No. Oh, that's what I was saying. Feels like you should actually put your virtual environment down inside Django or inside the example. But I'm sure you can, but whatever. Python manage test. Yeah, so you can run it while it's live. I just want to look at. actually look at it here too so checklist models checklist test so when you make create let's just see if this works and our model has checklist text make this work so creating test database for alias default okay cool so it looks like that worked Uh, I'm going to leave this sit for a minute while we work through it. Actually, you can do this. Let's get all chill all of a sudden. Okay, so we've got that. Let's see how the rest of this stuff works. I should figure out how quickly that mouse recharges so I can get rid of that. Ooh, come here. Test first name label. So author objects get ID one. Author, meta, get field, first name, verbose name. 
So alpha certs equal. It's like another trick for me with this. Oh, okay, they do put the author's model, author's model here. So it gives you, it's not too far away. So. That's what I'm looking to see what this is doing. So first name, last name. Where's this? Verbose name. Get field, first name, assert equals field name. Field label, first name, field label. Get field, first name, verbose name. Oh, okay, so this is test first name label. Okay, that's the label. Date of death label, first name, max length. Object name is last name, comma, first name. So this is... And this is kind of like, this test isn't super useful, but item, checklist item. So we made one, so get one. Expected. I just wanna see if I can figure out how to make tests work. I think this could be it, right? So we can format that. I still don't understand. I haven't looked up format strings yet. Expected object name equals string of author. But I want to do it more explicitly because that's both. That's weird to me. That's working off the same. So it's pulling in author and then it's doing this mix up, but like those, and then it's testing against itself. So it's testing against the same pull. If you've set this here, I would make this more explicit, which I'm about to do. We'll see if there's a reason not to do that. So expected object name. This is backwards to me, but hang on. We're going to see what happens here. Worked. Right, and let's break it. And make sure it breaks. False. Yeah, okay, perfect. So now we know how to test. That's good. So we can... This is good. I can go to the tone test. Uh, I think I can burn all this stuff too, right? It's got to set up for every, before every test. See, I would actually prefer to run it before every test, but I don't know if the database clears before every test. I'll have to look that up. So this this will be fine. But like. I like a 100% known state and like while you're setting this up, it could be that something in one test actually manipulates that even though you don't think it does, or you don't really think about the fact that it does. So again, I like being really explicit and tied down. Um, so item checklist, item, get objects, objects, get ID. I'm just curious. So, cause I like, expected is this, make this work. 
actual equals. And I would even do this if this works. I really like this pattern of expected actual. Like that. And actually, we're going to hi, whatever. So that should explode. Ooh, definitely exploded. Ah, didn't need that. Expected actual inconsistent use of tabs. Oh, come on. Inconsistent use of tabs and spaces, what? Not like that. Something was using. I don't know what the pip thing is. I think it actually may be for spaces. And I don't know why this is on tabs, actually. Because I do spaces. I don't, yeah, I don't know why is that on tabs. I think I do spaces. I can't remember. Whatever. Hi, make this work is not equal to make this work, right? So now we do this. Let's actually clear these right now. Cool. See, this is this is much more the pattern that I like. I want a really explicit string that I'm looking for, and I want as expected and then for actual I want to make you know as few calls as possible or as, as you know if I can stack it up that's fine if I need to make more calls it's fine but I want to do well yeah and ideally it would just be one thing like checklist items get one yeah so you could do And now I'm just playing around to see if I understand what's going on. So, right, so does this work? Yep. So what would be like a more advanced thing, and I'm not gonna do this, I'm actually gonna back this out just to get super explicit is a more advanced thing would be like at the, either up here. Yeah, so let's actually see if you could do, uh, can you do that? How would you pass? Like if you could do a setup and then pass like, you know, whatever, CLI, checklist item. Whatever, there. Um, that would be interesting to see, but this this works for now. And actually, I don't even know if that's worth doing. Uh, I see. Actually, does this work? I 
Let's make sure it breaks. Yeah, there, okay, there's your, here's my first test. I want, I want to add one test. that so now I don't have to do a tone test right I can just say hey we're gonna we're gonna play with this thing I'm a Bob sitting right there. I just couldn't see it through the filter. This shirt is just a little bit too small. All right, so that's how you do a models test. See, I've got no no problem with this type of move where we made something and then moved it because it we it let us make a small chunk <clears throat> and now we can kind of refactor it up to here. But like some of the official Django tutorial would like show you a thing but then completely do away with a thing that you're not that like it just wasn't used at all. We're still using the same line. We've just moved it to a better place or a new place. Set up all nominal objects. So I'm not going to put comments in there for this yet. Yeah, the comment thing is a little bit I go back and forth on because it's like it's it's more. I think it's mostly more noise to start with. Like, I think it would be better to kind of like, you know, do explain this and everything else line by line, right? Yeah, so this is doing all of our testing. This will also fail if your L comp is not defined. Oh, so you could. Yeah, you could drive your tests this way or drive your experiment this way. So this becomes the question is, do you actually start with TDD? No, that's that's it's a little too much. That that first hump of getting over the install is just a little bit too much. Um. Field test that the values of your redis name and the size of the character. Get an Arthur object. Get the metadata for the required field. Compare the value. Yeah. String. Not a handle for first name object. Okay. Yeah. See, this is more. Well, we're we're pretty far into this tutorial, so this may be okay. But like at at the first at the first thing here, it's just a little bit like e. We also need to test custom method custom methods. So our custom methods. Let's 
strength. These essentially just check that our object name we constructed six using last name first name format, and that the URL we get for author that knows what we expected. Then we just check this. Isn't that one of the tests? Object is first name, last name. Oh, they're just repeating the test. I gotcha. Yeah, so I would have added them one at a time. Test get absolute URL, right? Same thing. Test get absolute URL, right? Date of death. Models, date field, died, non true blank. Yeah, so this is. bug, but it does highlight how writing tests can more thoroughly check any assumptions you've made. Yep. Kind of persisting other methods similar, so we won't continue to discuss these further. Feel free, forms. Philosophy of testing your forms is the same. Okay, so I'm trying to think if that's enough of a test for us. Like, it's really... well. I'm trying to figure out if we want to introduce more functionality at this point. Because you can, so now we know how to test, now we could test something else just as, you know, as expansion, as a, as a, as a progress um, in learning. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. So let's add, And like really all we did, we really just tested Django here. We didn't test much. That just should, but this is actually an okay illustration for what's gonna happen. Um, maybe, or do we actually wanna split off and do, where's our models, right? You do it in models. So checklist item, checklist item, max length 200 field. So, What would be a good I'm just trying to think what would be a good thing. So what I want to have is like a boolean of is it done? And this is where I'm a little, yeah, we want to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because we want to make sure the field exists. Like we need to test that the mo that the model is accurate. Um, so we're going to go in our tests and I'm going to do Sandy Met style shameless green. So def test. Oh, and actually we can change this. Checklist text works. Let's 
so expected true actual true self assert equals expected actual so just make sure your test works Let's do this. I want to do this. I want to see it fail. Now we do checklist items, get object one is done. And this should fail. I guess we could just call it test is done, right? Yeah, test is done, is done, there we go. Actually, I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, like, I'm just, cause like, yeah, so it's in this class, so we're making it, yeah, this is a variable for the class, right? Yeah, it would be an instance variable if it was under that def in it, but like, it's just class variable. So this is just a class variable. So there's nothing magic going on here other than it's pulling a specific type of return, but this, if we're just going to return true, maybe it'll work. I don't know. Yep.
So now we look up. Field. Blaine Field is true false. Oh, actually, you know what I should do is open. I want to see the actual docs for this. Wow. Oh, 93 gig? Or I deleted something apparently. Did I put that in documentation? No. Where did I put it? Wrong. Where did I put, uh, where did I put it? It's on desktop. Nope. Documents, documents, I thought I put it in documents. Documentation, I did. I actually wanna look at the docs for this cause it's, it'll, it's good to, oh, you are not gonna be able to read that. I can barely read that. That helps. Yeah, hopefully that's not awful. Um, still finding stuff in a very weird order. Was recently when it was true. Models, billion field, default false. There we go. done true we're gonna put it underneath in case something explodes no such column is done oh, okay cool that's funny the okay yeah yeah, yeah.
So, uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Go back here. Where's migrate? I think this is going to do it. Sign. Sweet. So that's our boolean food. Okay, P food, field, boolean, boolean food, boolean food. It's like atomic food, I guess. Sounds bad. Put that in the mid tempo list. Uh, so what I forgot migrations. Yeah. Definitely gonna be a few pages of this. All right, so that got yeah. There we go. This is our checklist. Or is that? No, that's the Django checklist. The song however, not so good. No, oh, there's is done. Why isn't is done showing up on? Oh, and actually, here, let's change that because it's done, is, you know, it's not automatically done. Wouldn't it be nice if checklist works that way, worked that way? So, false. And now, what is it with all these weird... What is it with the warbly? I don't get the warbly. Stop that. Also, you're no longer shuffling. Shuffle. Wrong localhost or long port. Good lord, come on. There we go. The checklist, that, and there's our admin. All right, let's figure out how to do this. Do you want to do this to false? And I 
think if we run our tests, it's gonna break, right? Because we've got false and true in the tests. Nope. Here, go to our tests. False. Let's see if we're green again. We are green again. Uh, pi and test color. Nope. Unit test colored output. the end result to be green or blue is what I want a green or red what was this update of 2017 Using my various sort of router sensor, I have today released a package that enables color option on unit test results. Call it color runner. Nope. 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 I want I want this green. I want the, I want the word okay to be green or the word failed to be red. I might write my per first Python module. Here we go. We're going to do that. See, here's a checklist. Eventually, this will be in Django. Oh, whoops. That's a checklist. Ideas. Okay, Python module that changes the color. Of the last okay fail of unit test to red to green or red i just can't believe that's not a thing like i want the visual i shouldn't have to actually look at it i should be able to out of the corner of my eye without looking at anything over here see green or see red because our eyes can do that i have to look and say okay Destroying test database. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> Destroyed. It's still maintained at the time of this writing, which is funny because it's like 2012. Uh, Oh, enter January. Okay, hang on a second. No changes in for unit test. Uh, test to see the color. I think I tried this. Python helps you write better programs. Framework. It's a different thing. It's not unit test. It's this whole different thing. You can run unit tests. Including file and no set suites out of the box yeah uh whatever that's more that i want to get into right now if you're running pi test this way python and unit tests change it to pi test and you get colors for free I don't know. Django Pi test. I can't know the warbly. Maybe it's just my headphones. Pi test Django. 
make sure your Django settings module is defined. Configure Django settings. Make the task discover. See this? I don't want to screw with this right now. Ah, oh, whatever. I'll leave those in the mix. You can look at them if you want. Uh, so how? Where was I? What was I doing? What day is it? It's Friday. Uh, here. So we've got we've got it showing up in our admin. How do you make it show up on the admin page here? Because I don't want to have to click on them. Um, now I'm just gonna mess around a little bit. I'm not. I'm gonna just sniff around a little bit, basically. Admin site admin register checklist. Models test views. Context checklist items. Right, so now, okay, how do we want to test? Checklist item. So that's doing models checklist item, site register checklist item. So that's got our model. I just want to see, I'm just going to play for a second. I don't think I really need Banjo. Right now. So if you just do this, it's well, it's going to explode until you do the migration, right? Right. OK, so we do the migration again. Make migrations checklist. Uh oh, not noble field checklist to checklist without a default value. We can't do that. Maybe something something populate just in rows. Quit and let me add here, quit. Wait, how come it worked the... Oh, why did it let me do this here, but not that there? That's certainly odd. We set on all existing rows of this. Well, we set on all existing rows with a null value of this column. Checklist two checklist items without a default. Can't do that. I don't think I'm ever gonna need this one. Next. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so why is that weird panning stuff that's just in right now? Where do you set default? Char field. Yeah, so wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait.
Did it? Did it ask me that when we were first going through this? It must have. Charfield. All right, let's go to the docks. Charfield, max length 70. Why all of a sudden is it telling me I need a default? Blank equals true. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I think I understand what's going on. There's already values here. So when we're trying to add it, it doesn't know what to do. Okay, that makes sense. I think, right? We're going to delete these and see if this is what, what's happening. You're trying to add a non-nullable field, last name, to checklist item without a default. We can't do that. To that, the database needs something to populate existing rows. That's the key. So if we do this, it explodes. Probably because this is still here, maybe. Yes, I'm sure. Explode them. Nothing under checklist. Skip that for a second. Checklist notes. How about that? Make it an actual thing. Oh, actually, yeah, I just want to, so now I'm just checking to see where, fuck. Maybe once there are rows there. But I think I see the answer, but I, I'm surprised that that. Didn't work. Because there are no checklist items left. Oops, still busted. Blank equals true. See if that doesn't let us in. There you go. See, I want that to be explicit too. That should be here. Actually, I guess you wouldn't want to have that when you first make it. 
Yeah, you should have to have that. But notes, oh, okay, notes, okay, I'm with you, I'm with you. Notes should be okay to be there. Otherwise, you would throw a default value in there. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with this. This is all right. It's all right. Where did I put the link? It was down here, down here. Okay, that makes sense. I gotcha. I follow. So there's our Boolean field with the defaults to false. Okay. So I want to see. Yeah, it only show. Yeah, what I wanted to see was like what actually shows up here. So we'll have to figure out how to update the admin page at some point. Um, I'm just gonna leave those there right now. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm gonna leave those there. Because what we wanna do is, how are we gonna do this? Oh, that was that one. Actually get rid of that, oh, we might have. That's this one, actually, get rid of that whole thing. Uh, actually, let's back this out, because the only thing we want is that is done. And see, this is where it gets a little dangerous because I'm relying on the default. Yeah, you just have to make sure you never touch this or edit it. Because you could, like, it could be in a weird, it, like, it could be set to true all of a sudden, but something else sets it to false, and then this test would pass because it's getting there. It's a little bit, eek, but is okay. The more complex I get with this, the more likely I am to pull that out. Maybe. Yeah, because it's just, it's so easy to like, try and do work on a thing. Um, whatever. Oh, I'm not in get repo. Ah, I blew it away. Uh, whoops. Don't need weird zappy sounds. This is not a dolphin. This is not a song that is going to play again. Is that what? I don't think it would be quite so bad if it just wasn't like just barely audible in my headphones. It's just a weird feeling. Or I'm old. Probably I'm old. All right. So we got this. Let's actually add a couple, just so we can see what's going on again. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. I was like, why isn't that showing up? Uh, checklist item. Show is done on admin page. Aww. Oh, I changed the migration stuff again.
I like that it breaks hard like that. Here, let's, uh, let's actually just use it, right? Show, show is done on display page. And I don't know if I want to see if we can test for that is kind of where I'm headed with this. I don't know if we can. Uh, so let's go back and read through our test a little bit more. Because this was talking about forms. Test your models. You need to test anything that you've coded or you're done specifies, but not the behavior of the underlying framework with third-party libraries. Yep. Okay, still. Okay, start a form for renewing books. Fuse, here we go. Classics like Domain Web Browser. You can see almost everything. Love of results. Start with one of our simplest views, which provides a list of authors. This is displays and URL authors. URL named authors and URL config. Okay. driven development process, just start by running tests that confirm that the view displays all authors, paginate them in lots of 10. See, here's, here again, test, test views. I wanna look at the Django tutorial. Why are we doing this on the command line? Test to expose the bug. Time, time, so now, date, to time, for the question. Like, I don't know, I would like just a piece of text. Running test, running test pulls. Okay, that's how you do that. A whole bunch of junk, different error. Fixing the bug. And this may not be bad test stuff. I just, I haven't, I didn't make it this far. For any question, put the buttons update. Okay, test a view. playlist and see what happens. This is my more groovy one. Uh, actually, we're going to do the mid-tempo one. How about that? Uh, so we'll template under Why are we doing this on the command line? Surely that's not the way to do it for real. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, now it's listing everything just under polls tests. Yeah, we don't have to do that. Yeah, so just do it in the... Do it the way you're gonna do it. Add the following. And we'll create a shortcut. Import reverse. Def create question. Tests. No question. Okay, so it's making a high level function to make tests with whatever you pass to it. It's, again, it's just a bunch of stuff. Use, yeah, okay, so they're putting it back in tests. So that's actually what the thing I was looking for. They're putting stuff in tests. So now, I'm just trying to figure out if response code status 200. Testing on new view. Test no questions. So response equals self client get reverse polls index. Get the response code, response, no polls are available. So response contains, yeah, see, I'm trying to figure out if you, how, if we should test this, the output of the view. And I kind of don't, hmm. I mean, it may be okay to do it for an example. But I mean, the view is really just a view layer. So yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Um, yeah, you want to test the model. The view is, is design testing. Like that's human testing, not automated testing. Like separation of concerns between the view and the, uh, the model, right? I forget what, there's a name for that pattern. I can't remember. But yeah, so we don't, yeah, we don't, we don't need to do that. Um, At least not in this case. There may be times when you want to do that. Uh, test view URL exists to the desired location. Okay, so checking if a URL exists. Yeah, so it's not it's not testing the pages. It's just testing if the URLs still work. Is paginated. And again, this might be. Yeah, I don't know. Um, use it a restricted. Testing views with forms. Maybe, I don't know. That that feels that feels a lot like you're Hey, selenium, so you can actually bounce back and forth over stuff. <clears throat> yeah, so I think that might be it, right? So, well, you could build, you could build the page. 
to do to do the changes, right? So instead of having admin, uh, you could do that. Like you could click the link, you could click the page, you can get to the thing. Um, I don't think I'm gonna tackle that tonight. Excuse me. Learn web development. I've been super impressed with these uh, these pages. I've been using the Mozilla Docs for a while um, and really like them. I, I hear that they've had a bunch of layoffs and stuff, which sucks because I think they're one of the best things out there. So hopefully all these people land on their feet and uh, are able to continue doing this stuff. Make websites fast and responsive to assessing server side. Uh, where did I say contact us? Discourse form. Uh, framework for entry level web literacy. Oh, that's cool. Actually, we're just going to open all those. Like absolute beginner stuff. Is Code Academy free? Uh, I don't think it is. See, I hate that it says aimed at children, complete beginners. Like, eh, whatever, it's fine. If you know what's worth tech skills, mentorship based learning, free code camp. Thousands of interactive JavaScript challenges. That's cool. Uh, so what do we want to do? Um, I think I want to put this away for a little while because I've got like this is Yeah, so we get up and we and we walk through a test. So you can, we can build more tests in the models, making sure that stuff works, and kind of keep adding stuff to it. Like we can add a notes, and then test the notes work. How do you? So how do you add? Add something to the admin page. I have many tabs. Model admin objects. Author admin. Model admin. This is model admin interface. Use and sort out. Let's take a look at model admin. Display author admin. Admin empty value display. All right, so where is this file? Oh, uh, nope, I thought it was in here. Where's the file? for a file passing at the top of one of these code blocks. I haven't found it yet. <sighs> Overrunning admin templates. Oh, actually, I don't want to do that, I don't think. for 
first Django app, Django tutorials. Let's see what this one's got. Adding custom views and templates to Django admin. How about that? Never said as you could probably doesn't need to running if this. I just wanted to add a single link to the bottom of my page. I'm extending the base change form, which means all the fields or forms I've specified in template admin class above list with a lot of users. Let's models with the admin. Got it. Admin site register. Got it. Got it. Server, yep, okay, okay, okay. Sure, the venue name is in alphabetical order. Okay, this looks like what we want to do. Events admin. So we want to do Okay, this is what I think this is what we want. In Django, each model is represented in the admin interface by model. You can customize how the display looks in the admin, set it to option things. Open admin pie. All right, so our admin pie. We're doing our import. We're gonna drop this for a second. is checklist item admin model admin list display checklist text is done cross your fingers so we're gonna back out Make sure we're still alive. Oh, server's dead. Somewhere back here. There we go. That's alive. Okay, let's try this again with the. Uh, whoops. Where's already in use? Is that it? That is it. 
Why did it freak out? Who knows? All right, we're gonna try this again. I don't think it's gonna work. I think that was a legit bug. Okay, page not found. Is that actually true or is that? That's weird. It looks like it is done. That's a weird. I don't like that. I would prefer it to be like empty and then a green checkbox or something, which maybe you can fix. Uh, I get it now. That's fine. But so that's how to. So that is something else we wanted to do. That's cool. Um, yeah, I kind of want to mess around with some other stuff now. That's kind of a couple hours of this is enough. Um, yeah, this is a good start. Uh, I don't know. We're a few hours into building this thing. It's cool. Uh, I like it. It's it's in pretty good shape. It'll be. Um, a nice little thing and I've I've learned a lot about it and I've, so it's funny is I will I haven't learned as much about it because I've been focused on all the little parts but what I've got is a really good set of notes for how to do stuff that I'll put into my grimoire uh, or my developer notebook to make it easier for me to kind of dig into this stuff and when I'm kind of ready to do it for real I will be in pretty good shape, right? So, um, and I, yeah, so I'll, I, and I will, yeah, I'll definitely, I was thinking earlier that like maybe like for my first version, I wasn't gonna worry about having the links and, and doing all the stuff on this page and just do everything through the admin. But like, I want, I don't wanna, I don't wanna work in the admin page, right? I wanna, I wanna work on this page so that I can just click and have things move, um, et cetera. So, We'll definitely do that. Uh, I mean, I was gonna do that anyways, but now I'm gonna do that even for the stuff that I'm gonna do instead of just working out of the admin. Um, 
So that's pretty solid. So, all right, I'm gonna just capture all these links real quick. Uh, nope. Do I have it actually, whoops. Yeah. Uh, there's all the links that we have open. Um, where do I want to put those? Here. Tutorial part three. Thanks. I got to figure out how I'm going to publish this. I think I may just do one write up for all the videos and then put the tutorial, split the tutor tutorial out, however it's gonna run. Um, yeah, I can't tell if that's warbly or not. I think it is a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It sounds more pronounced when it's lower in the headphones for some reason. Uh, cool. Okay, so that'll do that for now. Let's back out of this for a little bit and go play with something else. Uh, that's that. Get out of there. It's our Hugo site. So what we do want to do... do on this last one. Whoops. Nothing, apparently. Okay. Cool. I like it. Yeah, see, I just, it really, it blows me away that that just doesn't. Wait, um, I swear. Crazy FFM tags. No, I don't have it. Oh, Django, wait a minute. Django comments. There's something out there. Um, what you could do. We're actually going to try something. Um, where's my sauce for testing on a single page? Single file with main and test. Yeah, okay, so let's try that. I want to try something. Just real quick. So uh, let's go to Python. Let's do that. So maybe get it where you can see it. If we run this. Yay, it worked. Okay. Print, yeah, it worked. Main. Sys exit. Else. Uh, 
All right, let's see. Hang on. Let's fail a test. So this is just a little thing that I put together that has uh, return true. It's true. False. We might be able to do this. Um, oh, actually, what I should do is close all these. Oh, wait, what's the thing? Boom. Python change terminal color. Highly active question. I saw a 2020. Oh, I guess that's the answer. Let's put up. If someone defends a platform, those common ways to do it is by printing ASCII safe sequences, for example. Python curses how to is. Oh, actually, I guess. Um, but so let's just try the most simple thing, class B color. So, so warning fail, sounds like maybe what we want. Does it need to be in single quotes? scripts header blue green warning fail nc i'm looking for like a red red that aren't it Sound right. Escape. I messed around with some of this doing the command line for so for like ZSA ZSH I put in like the blue and the green or whatever uh, red to get red use this one Bright red, use one through one.
033. Wait, undo. Boom. There's some red. Now it's going to be white again. So let's find our green, shall we? I'm very happy about this. Oh, here we go. Uh, foreground color, background color. So it's white. So 42, maybe? Oh, it's not showing you. Okay, okay, okay. 30, 32. <laughs> Look at that. I've been after that for a long time. Uh, I'll have to figure out how to actually make it go in an easier way. Unit test, test loader, yeah, yeah. So this, so basically, the the thing that I did here is I built up this little test case set up so that all this junk lets me run tests in the same file at like one file has both the actual the actual code and the test that you're going to run all mixed together but the tests actually run first every single time that you run the file um i just kind of like that idea with some of the stuff that i do that i maybe have to give out to make sure it does kind of its own like sanity check before it actually does work um and the sanity checks fails sometimes right because if it but if it fails it doesn't it doesn't run the script so it gives you a check before the script tries to do something um it's probably overkill for most things but i like it and it, i find it useful and like comforting in terms of like okay this should be okay but so this that's what all this does is it it runs the tests and it captures the output and then it looks to see if there's failures or errors. And if there are, it prints out this capture stream, which is the same thing that you've seen forever saying, you know, test failed. All we gotta do is add the red above that. And then if it doesn't, you get the green. Um, most of the time I don't, I don't put this else there uh, because if it's, uh, wrong run. Um, if it's gonna run, I just it just goes to main and does whatever main does. Like I don't want to print out test results if all the tests pass. That the only time you print test results is if you see a failure, right? Um, and so in this, but we can confirm that we can you know once we've got the pieces of text, then we can edit and address it and make it whatever color we want. Um, so the, so the question is 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 that worth um, is that worth doing? What, what would it take to do that? And is it worth doing for uh, regular unit tests? Like how, how would you do that with a regular unit test, right? Um, what do I have right now that is a regular unit test that we can do? Um, I kind of want to solve that. Uh, like it's probably,
I'm sure one of the, like... Green is a runner, right? Pretty far I don't want. I can probably look at these and see... Pretty far. And see, I don't want any of that. I want it right here. That's all I want to do. I don't need the rest of this stuff. Uh, if you prefer the single the right side, this module is for you. Using it. Change color whole case. Test. Import unit test. Change the color of a specific test. How do you change the output? See, what you, what you could do is just capture... I mean, worst case is you could do what I did and set up that capture stuff, but that's kind of ridiculous. So the... Um, Change just the line of your test inputs. It's a clone of your colorized output, yeah. Yeah, so the problem is this is 2013. Like, it, well, let's see if it's when it, when it was last updated. Seven years ago. Let's see, I'm not going to use that. Um, but I wonder. If you could import, if you could import something that actually imports unit test, but just overrides it. This is literally an exact clone of unit test, but with colors. Now also compatible with three. Yeah, I don't want to clone, like, I, that means you've got to keep it up to date, right? Yeah, I mean, like, all this stuff is in there. That means if unit test upgrades, you've got to maintain, got to stick with unit test. And, like, not interested in that. Um, how do you make a unit test runner? It's, it's going to be doing something right here. Which again, like that, that code I have. This does it. I mean, you could do like that is how to colorize it. If you really want to go through all those steps. Um, and like if you're in, if you're just in your. Like, that's how you run the tests as, you know, as its own thing, right? Probably. Yeah, green. So that's actually a solution right there. I'm gonna write that up. But, a, but the question is, is there a way, cause you need that as well, and sys. So you don't need system exit right there because uh yeah you do uh actually no you don't like if you're just if you're just doing your if the file the only thing in the file is unit test and it chokes then 
go there. I don't know if it has fail fast, though. Fail fast. True. Look at that. Name false is not defined. I think I did something funky in the test. What did I do? It's true. That's cool. So, can you append something to? How would you make a module for that? Because you you should just be able to like ride. So if you've got unit test. You could just make a module of this and just, you know, instead of unit test down here, run this stuff. Because this text test runner does it. Like, that's how, that's how you do it. I wonder how you make a Python module and, like, push it up to pip. Not going to do that tonight. But that's this. Sorry. That's the solution. I'm happy with that. Now, I don't know how to apply that to things like Django, but for my tests, I can do that. And that's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out a good way to wrap that. I don't have a good way to wrap that. It's got to be a way to do it. And then just call. Yeah, so and you could you could even drop this stuff. And so you'd call unit test. Actually, yeah, you wouldn't even have to call unit test necessarily, right? You could just call your thing. OK, I'm actually going to try this. Uh, PyCharm. Itself, is that how you do it? Uh, tone equals one, right? So we've got we've got that. Now we need to do test file under test pi. I swear I killed this song. Aww. Import unit test. Class test. Class under test unit test test case right def test tone C U T Oh we need to import file under test. Uh, whatever. Do 
Wait a minute, why is that not working? It all looks angry. What am I doing wrong? Oh, give me a little red thing. Unresolved reference file under test. It's right here. Why didn't that work? What's going on? T-E-S-T. I don't get it. Isn't that how imports work? Based on portfolio Python, all the pros and cons. Understand. Like, I feel like I've definitely done this before. Import lamb. File test lamb. File lamb.py, right? What is going on? Don't need psychoacoustics, thank you. Is it because I've got this up top somehow? Whoops. No module named my file. Reference, more actions. Like that works, right?
I don't, I don't understand. This is the code I use, and like, it works. Does it matter that it's in... a subdirectory? Is that what's, and maybe it's PyCharm? All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You go away. Yeah, okay. You come here. You come here. File under test. Actually, whatever. From file under test, import, class under test. Class with here. Um, It's that same. He's gonna yell. It's coming. Nope, too early. It's coming though, I can feel it. Pie Charm doesn't like it. Okay. There it is. I literally just took that out of here. It's not in there, and it's still in the playlist. This groove app is just not as great. Oh, so I, it was running. It didn't choke, so that's a good sign. If name main test failed. Okay. Well, now it's well, it's throwing what look like errors, but maybe it's actually letting it go. Test passed. Unresolved reference. See, that, I don't understand why that's not working. I, I may be doing it wrong, but that's it works in other places. And like if you go here and do this test file scaffold. Oh wait. Hmm, that's all in one. Never mind. Maybe that's not the way to do it. But Calls it, it works, right? Because if we do this, it's gonna freak out. Yep. And then self assert equal. Uh, let's actually do it the way we normally do it. 
expected one, actual one, right? So everybody expected actual test passes and then actual equals cut tone failed. I goofed. Oh, why didn't that work? Has no attribute tone. And that how you get to this? Whoa, don't do that. Goofed. Uh, or instance variables, anyone? More of that just wah, wah. Self data, yeah. Oh, self, 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 self. Gotta be self. Now, how are we doing? Green, okay. So how do we make a module? And we're gonna do this in its own little thing. Um, Test red green. Great. New window. Functions or for you must write some of the longer program, better for text editor. It's creating a script. It's worth this Python's way to put definitions in a file and use them as scripts. Such file called module. Definitions can be imported. Modules define contain Python. File's name and module suffix by. Within a module, the module's name as a string is available. As a valuable and a global variable name. Okay. For instance, reactor text poo qualifier. Okay, gotcha. Executing modules and scripts, not what we're gonna do. Model search path, yes, please. Compiled standards, dir packages. Porting star from a package. 
How do you make? How do you make one? and create your own Python modules. We're composed of Python py files. Writing and importing, okay. All right, well, let's write it first and see what happens. So, pi, single file, let's put it in here, right? Yep. So I'm just gonna grab all this. Actually, let's, so let's see if we can make this just call unit test to start with. So, actually, let's do this while we're here. So we've got this. So what we want to do is we need file under test. Test file under test. And then that. So file under test. Class, class under test, def, and it self, 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 tone equals one. And then close this from out. I gotta fix these songs.
import unit test class class test class under test unit test test case def test tone uh so expected equals one actual equals one eh, two whatever self because we're making it red and then we'll make it green self should write a snippet for that. So this should fail. Verified failure. Things ain't the same. Should pass. Got it. Now cut equals class. Nope. So from file. See, now it's catching it. I don't know. It must have been something in the directory. Like, if you're not on the root, it doesn't like it sitting next to it. I don't know how that pathing works. But that certainly caught it. So class under test equals class under test. Cut tone. Passing. OK. And, oh, this is going to be interesting because it's automatically running unit test for us. But that may be OK. So let's take unit test out of here. And it shouldn't do anything now, right? Because it doesn't see tests. Unit test is not defined. Ah, uh, shit. Hang on. If we import unit test red green and move import there, does it work now? No. So you can't pass it, huh? Um, shit. What about this? So if that's a full thing, Charge, just be able to get rid of it now. There you go. Okay, it's messing with me. Basically, we define dark net class, which means which inherits an in properties class in the new size. Last line is the calling of the forward pass bone. Such file is called module. Definitions from module can be imported into other modules or into the main module. The collection of your, yeah, so. So would you just do, now I feel like I wanna be able to 
do... Because I want to be able to have all this stuff still exist. What's going to be tricky is... Uh, actually, I wonder... Hang on. If we do this... Does this stop PyCharm from running the tests? No, it does not. Also, why did it explode? I don't know what happened. Wait a minute. Okay, so this is this is mm, this is being a little too smart. It's running tests even though I'm not calling unit test anywhere. I'm not. Maybe there's a way to turn that off. Yeah. See. Oh, create gifts. Look at this. They got all kinds of shit. Unit tests. This falls under tests. Unit tests. See, I don't want to run. Click inside name function block, it will show you run script option instead of the run unit test. After that, you can save the created run configuration, use it to run the script. Okay. Just as long as there's a way to do it. Oh, okay, you gotta click like right there. It still ran unit test. Nope, that's not working. Edit. All right, let's see what else that said, because that didn't actually work. Let me just say there is you need to delete any existing configurations associated with a file before you can right click and debug. So the full procedure is. Good lord. That's better. Sorry. Whoops. Let's take it off. Edit configurations. Which is somewhere.
fix that up a little bit. Uh, oh, so you gotta delete these? Is that what they're saying? Now I can run it, because I don't want I don't want unit test messing with me. Unit test is not defined. Okay, so the question is: so we've got unit test. test oh so we got to be able to pass it to get it into here right well or do we hang on right so that's gonna work because you can find it and then Run unit test. shit look at this shit Call it, can you call it the same thing? Sweet. And just to make sure it's legit. So yeah, see it's red. It says okay, and then you do it this, and it's red, even though it's okay. So that's doing the main. I'm gonna make my first module. There's probably a thousand reasons why I shouldn't do this, but... Need this. Need 
this. This. So that does it. Yeah, actually, so we can just pop all this stuff right up here. <laughs> Let's get rid of this here. And then if we fail, what do we get? Why didn't it fail? Should have failed. Uh, now I'm concerned. Oh, ran zero tests. Why'd you run zero tests? You should have run tests. Oh, because we didn't call... Wait a minute. Unit test, test runner, fail stream, capture... Oh, come on. We can make this work, right? Right, because this... Fails. That doesn't. Crap. Oh, we're so close. Unit test, test X runner, stream capture, fail fast run. It thinks it's in this file somehow, I guess. But why did this... Oh, come on. There's gotta be a way to do that. So unit test main worked. But it's still making a call. Stream capture. Hmm. Sweet. Which is here, units text text alert test for module, sys modules name. 
that may be where the trick is. That a thing? It's gonna explode. Main is not defined. Crap, come on. Sys modules. This is what's going on. Yeah. So like right. Unit test, unit test, right green. Yeah, so it's hitting, that is in this file. Sys module's name. So it's loading, what is this doing? That's the trick right there. Load test from module. And you gotta get the module that it, that's calling it. Suppose caller name menu. I want caller name to be set the name attribute of the calling functions module, which is my foo. So how can this be done? Check out the module and stack inspect stack return stack information. Inside a function inspect stack one will turn your caller's stack. From there you can get more information about the caller's functions name, module, etc. some code which it does so from info odd name message okay this looks interesting we'll return your caller stack so okay uh now here's a question. Do we have to do a thing? Do we have to make a whatchamacallit thing? Stack equals that. Let me guess. Not defined. Frustrating. Inspect, inspect live objects. stack in there, but virtual machine, interpreter stack. Get a list of frame records for all the frames. Yeesh. Current frame. Return the frame object of the caller's stack frame. Here's stack. Return a list of frame records for the caller's stack. First entry in the returned list represents the caller. The last is as, 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 outside most, whatever. But here's the question, where do we include it? Wait, why didn't it, uh, why didn't it just work? From so yeah, we need this. Is that gonna work? Oh, let's do this. I lied, let's just do it this way. Just so we don't have a name collision.
function red green. So wait, is it one? Frame file, test file, code module, file name, line number, context. Also, put the points if I write a script to just do that. Uh, spec stack, so we put it in parens and the, did it that way. What's that going to do? Not callable. different now it looks like Come on, it's not helpful. Oh, wait. None type error has no object name. Come on. being called from here. I understand. How, okay, how are we gonna do this? We're gonna get a bite and then we'll figure it out. Be right back.
I'm guessing one of the top 10 streamer tips is don't eat on stream. I'm hungry. Okay. So we're catching this as main because we're calling this from in here. What if... What if we call it twice? How about that? Yeah, both times it's given us that. So one should get us to the caller. Whoops. It's doing main both times. Okay. But it's given us. Excuse me. All right, let's just let's just hard code it before we and see if we can make it just at least go somehow or figure out what we need to send it. Excuse me. Test file under test. Oh, I wonder if you have to import it both ways. That wouldn't surprise me. That's going to be a circular thing. It's going to eat itself. So how do we get to that? No, what if we do... Key error, test file under, it's key error, okay. Sys modules. Here's a thing I don't understand. This is calling sysmodules name. Name ain't here.
Test the loader. Load test for module. Yeah, so I want to test. I want to get them. How do you do that without making a circular reference? In the simple case, it should work by moving import statements to the bottom of the file. We're not using the from syntax. Here's how it works. When you import a module, Python first checks sys modules. If it's in there, it just imports it from there. If it's not, it tries to import it normally. Basically, it finds file and runs the stuff in it. Run a module, populate some module's contents. For example, say we have a module, creative name, example opener. Show me the answer first, please. Oh, God. What if we import open example at the end of web browser and web browser from the end of example? Python wants to start by executing this code, open. Web browser does not exist. But it doesn't matter until open example is called. Okay. Now example over opens open example, then it executes web browser. Based on the runner, it's supposed to find it's open and executes from the run. Example over is in sys modules, so it uses that. Example over contains open export, so it succeeds. Python versus importing web browser includes it. Don't do from import import, just do import and references its objects using the module name. Say it's not particularly recommended to put imports at the bottom or at mixed points throughout the journal of thumb. So we're in dev test right agree. Oh, but you wouldn't know how to call it back. Unless you passed, well, okay, before we get there, let's get this working. Oh, so yeah, that's what I actually was trying to do. Can't import name. Oops. Oh yeah, it said don't do this. So do that. Q 
here. Mm, wait a minute. If we do it, test file under test. Oh, crap. Come on. Well, let's just try it. Like that. Oh! Wait a minute. Are we there? Green. Red. All right, clean this up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. For that, for that. That, 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 that. So now we just gotta get the import happening the other way. We get rid of inspect. happy with that. Sweet. New module. Wait, what? That's supposed to be an import function. Oh, 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 okay. I gotcha. Oh, okay. So you can target it. Oh, wait. Why is that still showing all that other junk? Red, failure, look at that. Green. Another thing you could do is like, chop a couple lines off the end, because doesn't it? So one, I can come, whoops. I can comment this out. Ah. Decks are expected. Oh, yeah, got it. Oh, I think I just crashed.
That's bad. Oh, crash in. Eat another bite of pizza, see if it comes back to life. That was weird. I swear I felt that. After these messages, we'll be right back. Text is coming back on the screen over there, so I'm cautiously optimistic that I don't have to go buy another commuter alarm. ball up in the upper left corner though which is not something I like seeing also no progress bar a little disconcerting Ball just went to a cursor. Things seem to be coming back to life. Where's my mouse? Okay, mouse still works. junk up you can't see it right now but the mini bar is still doing its thing I thought I told art not to be there I'm looking at arc for backup um, if it can talk to Amazon deep glacier I'll use it if it can't do it like natively I don't think I will and I'm, I would kind of be surprised if it does because some of their fun functionality is getting stuff back. And I don't know how you'd program that easily around Glacier that has like 12 hour return times. Okay. Here's where it exploded. Let's see if it explodes again. Nope. Okay. Yeah. See, look at that. That's awful. Red. But there's a sp and there's also a space underneath it. So, but when I do this, there's two spaces underneath it. I'm gonna chop them both out.
later. That's when I'm gonna, when I'm gonna do that. Oh man, I thought it locked up again. Let's try the groove playlist and see what happens. It's probably gonna be awful. Not a bad start though. All right, let's solve the thing about getting the, you know, thing going first. So you got to do that. And why didn't it work? To call that other way to call it with that stack it was calling from main I wonder if we had looked one more down and also what if we do it here um, Left in the comments. Wasn't all the way there. Uh, where's Safari? Nice. Oh, okay, all the tabs are still there. I'm actually thinking about updating my little script to just constantly capture whatever's in the window or whatever's the. Um, what your things are. Did that just work this time? Because if that worked... Well, awesome! Because now... We can do that dynamically. 
don't know what the difference is between this and what I did earlier. Uh, Cause this should then go be able to go in here, right? Boom. Boom. That might be it. Wow. I think that's it. That's it. That is it. Now we can get rid of all this stuff. Mainly because we're leaving other stuff in there. And then, okay, so the last thing, oh, wait, wait, wait hang on. Move this down here, right? Hopefully. Oops. Right? Is that still gonna work? Yes. Yes. Oh, well, wait, wait, wait. We don't even need to pass it. We can do it dynamically. this, right? Wait, do you have to be, do you have to call it back? No. Do you? Failed. Passed. We don't need to make the other import call. This is weird. I would have sworn that I did that earlier. Whoops. Okay. So can we simplify this? Or is that gonna freak out if we do that? There's failure. There's success. Yeah, so all you need to do, that's cool. All you need to do is do that and then replace that with unit test main, or replace unit test main with that. And then, so we're gonna Uh, 
QRS to you and then from IO and then QRS to you. I'm trying to chomp the white space at the end of these things. That did not work. Did not work. What huh. if we just do this and see what happens here? Yeah, okay, one big line. Dollar sign the end, right? Okay, so that's one space. That's two, okay. So we're actually making progress. How do you make it match? What's that gonna do? Nope. Did do something though, didn't it? Slash in, slash s, star, slash in. Oh, it's it's coming off print. Ah, I get it. Okay. How's that? Wait a minute. I don't understand where that last. I guess it automatically hits enter to do this process finish line or whatever. Must. See, look at how much better that is. It's red, you know it's failed. I can look out of the corner of my eye and I know that that passed. That's how it should be. I shouldn't have to do this. I, I like this though, I'm proud of this. Now I just gotta figure out how to turn that in and put it up on pip. Cause that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, that's well, not a bad night's work for figuring that out. Like that's something that bugs me all the time. I, and I don't know how to, I'll have to see if I can actually put that into Django as well. Um, Cause I'd like to be able to have all my tests do that. Um, and you know, PyCharm was automatically running unit tests. So I have to figure out how there's a way. And it looked like in that configuration, you could probably set that up. Um, to, well, worst case, you just run it and you actually put your own, you know, calls in. Um, yeah, 
so that's I'm happy with that. I've been after that for a while. Still can't believe that's not how it works. Um, and also that it like show like if it wasn't going to show a color, or if it wasn't going to go red and green, it shouldn't just go red because it's like that is meaningful in the whole terminology of red green with test right. Um, Cool. Uh, yeah, so I think that'll do it. The going to stream some tomorrow. I uh, haven't actually set the schedule yet, but uh, I'll definitely be back on. So uh, in the meantime, y'all be kind. See you around.